Welcome to the Money Over 50 podcast, brought to you by Dallas Davison and Michael Hogue from Money Over 50 Financial Advisors. This information is general in nature and does not take into account your objectives, financial situation, or needs. Therefore, you should consider whether the information is appropriate for you and your personal circumstances. If you require personal advice, please contact Money Over 50 Financial Advisors. Here are your hosts, Dallas Davison and Michael Hogue. Welcome to Money Over 50. Today's topic is that companies can't be both greedy and risky. Michael, what are we talking about? Yeah, Dallas, so a little bit of background just to, to, to look at some figures here. Yeah. So if we go back to the 9th of March 2009, um, history shows that that was the very bottom of the of the uh ASX, so the largest 200 companies in Australia, and the S&P 500, the largest 500 companies in America, that was the bottom of their global financial crisis lows. They they were they were um, uh, on that date. They were some 57 percent below below their previous highs, which which occurred in 2007. Mm-hmm. Um, since that since that period of time, the the largest 500 companies in America have grown at a circa 17.5% per annum yep. uh, compound return from that bottom. Yep. Uh, yeah, Again, on the 23rd of March 2020, mm-hmm. both those indices again hit their, their lows for 2020. They were yep. down from 37% yep. with, with, um, with COVID, COVID fears. So that had forced people to panic out and the price had dropped by 37%. Now, from that bottom, if we just look at the ASX 200 uh, this time, uh, with dividends reinvested, that index is up is up a total of 68% mm-hmm. to the 8th of October 2021. So it was down 37%. It's, it's up 68% from that from that bottom. Yep. Uh, if you if you measure from the bottom up to where it is now. Yeah. And so it's, a, it's always, sorry. No, I was just going to uh, say it's interesting because uh, people who aren't really numbers focused are probably glazing over a little bit. But, but the point that we make, the point that we're making here is like during that time, those are, those are some huge amounts of, of, of th- those positive returns are astronomical, really, when you look at it over, you know, from March 2009, 12, 12 plus years ago, 17.5% rate of return since then, so from the mm-hmm. bottom. And, and the bit that I think is interesting is, is that includes that. That's not from the bottom to the peak before COVID. That's no. from the bottom to now, including the, the drop during COVID. Yes. So, and then even in this last sort of 18 months, the ASX 200 being up 68%. It, it's, not, mm. it's not quite double, but it's, it's in the ballpark. And so those are, those are huge returns. And those, those returns have been driven by the profits of those biggest and best companies. They've been driven by the profits and we haven't even spoke about profits yet. No. And and um, what what strikes me as strange, I've, I've heard this from uh, over the years from, from numerous people and the same, it's from the same individuals yeah. will say, uh, you know, they'll lament how profitable companies are, yeah. Yeah. but at the same time claim that they are risky. So, yeah. Yeah. so one individual yeah. will say... These greedy these big, companies. big greedy companies making all this money. I just heard again that yep. um, NAB's yep. made an all-time record profit. record profit, or CBA's made an all-time record profit, or yep. or um, you know Woolworths or whatever. Uh, and and then the, in the next breath, they'll say, you know, oh, investing in shares is risky. Yeah. And I, and I, and and I've I've always found that strange. Yes. And I, I've thought, if this is this representative of of uh, yeah, is this representative? Is this a representative sample of, of of how people in general feel about this? Well, I think the, it can't it can't be both. It can't be both. And this is the point. That you, the, the whole point of this is that companies can't be both greedy and risky. So it's it's either that, and and this is I've actually had some really really good interesting conversations with with my mother in law about this because she, mm. she's um, she's actually a very good debating partner, which is yeah. which is good because I think. Me and her love to have these debates, and everyone else is having dinner and just going, oh, "I wish these, I wish these two had stopped talking about this." But we've had discussions before about how, um, you know, say the big banks, for example, and, and that was the example I was thinking of throughout this. 
from March 2009, the big banks were, were seen. You know, that was when there was there was a couple of banks in America that had gone gone bust. There was a lot of fear about banks going going broke, and that was that was that was why those those panic bottoms were hit. Was that you know the financial system is going to melt down? That was you know mm. the, the phrase that was all the time. It was. Yeah, these these banks are going to go to zero. They're going to be they're going to be worth nothing. It's going to be uh, you know it's going to be like the the Great Depression when people were lining up outside your local mm. NAB branch. It's so that was that was March two thousand and nine. That was mm. the the feeling or the sentiment. Fast forward not even ten years, and we've had the Royal Commission into the big banks, mm. where for for you know I can't remember how, three to six months it felt like the news headlines were constantly. Mm. These these greedy big banks are too profitable. The, mm. These you know these banks are making too much money. Now, just to clarify here, separate to all of this, there, there is companies can a company is just a collection of individuals. So yes, the individuals within that company can be too greedy, and they can do the wrong thing. And and that's it's not to say that anything that a company does should be a free for all. There are there are laws, there are regulations for a reason. It's it's to stop. You know, poor behaviour, poor corporate governance within these mm. organisations. But I think the the point that you touch on there is that within the space of ten years, and and I think what actually happens is that this happens not just within ten years; it happens day by day. Pe- mm. People will literally go. It really annoys me that CBA or NAB charge me two dollars fifty to take cash out of the machine that that isn't branded the you know the NAB or the CBA one. That's mm. They're rip-off merchants. They're just focused on making money. They're greedy. They're this, they're that. And then in the next breath say, but I don't want to invest in CBA, uh, you know, or I don't want to invest in the biggest and best companies in, in Australia around the world. They're too risky. Um, mm. If all their job is, if, if these companies or the individuals operating these companies, if you genuinely feel that all their job is is to think about how to run a profitable and enduring and sustainable and, you know, maximize their shareholder return over the long term which is which is the mandate effectively mm-hmm. you can't simultaneously think it's it's horrible and inhumane that companies are focused purely on shareholder shareholder value and then also say it's too risky i don't i don't mm-hmm. want to i don't want to own a share of that now like i said here it, this is not getting into who's right and who's wrong about what companies how they should behave and not behave it's just interesting that those are two conflicting thoughts, realistically. They're, they're, mm-hmm. they're two sides of, of, of a coin. And it's like, it's like thinking you're going to flip heads and tails at the same time. It's either one or the other. They're, mm-hmm. either, they're either greedy and horrible and they just care about money and they're just you know, sucking profits into themselves and paying out the shareholders and, and not caring about the community at large. Or they're you know they're not greedy in which case you know their profits they're not going to be focused on profits and and that would be scary for the shareholders but it but it can't be both at the same time yeah look absolutely you know it's, it's always struck me strange that that and i think people do make those comments without thinking about it thinking it through uh and they take a lot of they, uh, i mean they, they, there's just been a it seems like forever, and certainly before my time, there, there's been this misconception that that um, shares are risky. Yeah. And 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 when you say it like that, you can you can you can see how people do carry that misconception on, because they say the word shares. Yeah. You know, shares are risky. Well, yeah. We use the word companies. Yeah. So yeah, owning owning, yeah. and holding the largest, you know, couple of hundred. Companies in Australia, the largest fifteen hundred companies in the world, mm. the, best, the biggest and best companies, and being well and truly diversified. Um, we we would argue with anyone that it's risky. Yeah, yeah, it's volatile. Yeah. at times, but but we we drive this into the ground like a tomato steak because of the fact that it, it is the it is the best way that we know for our clients to meet their goals and objectives. Yeah. Um, we just know of no other. We just know of no other asset class than the best quality companies of Australia and the world that will be as diversified, um, give us and our clients a growing income stream throughout, you know, the throughout their retirement. Yep. Um, and you know, when you look at the way that companies operate, uh, they 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 say take that bundle of the largest five hundred companies in America, for example. So their profits are up 
roughly tenfold where they were 30 years ago. So, so um, I don't think people understand how that really works. So, <laughs> um, people, I think, assume also that 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 that'll get to a ceiling, and yeah. that profit making ability will 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 hit a ceiling, and it'll never grow any higher. So, how companies make a bigger and bigger profit every year is they they reinvest some of last year's profit and and, and improve their business. And um, yeah, I, I've used this I use this example all the time because it's nice and tangible. But but when Woolworths started in nineteen twenty five, they had five supermarkets now. They've gotten to a business now that has over a thousand supermarkets, um, purely and simply by reinvesting the profits that they had from five supermarkets, yeah. and then getting to ten supermarkets, and then of course they make a bigger profit from ten supermarkets, yeah. and they reinvest some of that profit, yeah. and they get to twenty, yeah. and they're making a bigger profit of twenty. Yeah, um, and all the while inflation's going yeah, up as that, well. Like, that, so the, that's the, a really good example of one where. So as, as an example of a complaint that I've heard about companies where they go, this, you know, this Woolworths is pushing out all the mum and dad stores. So, you know, the, the people have a problem mm. with that in some ways because they go, it's it's not, it's, you know, these poor, this poor couple that had the, you know, the local grocery store, they're gonna, they've been pushed out by Woolworths has come in and cut mm. their lunch and taken over all their customers and that shouldn't be allowed. Now, and again, it's this is not a, a place here is not to say mm. whether that should be allowed or not, but... You can't simultaneously say, "Okay, well, Woolworths has come in and, and cut out all the mum and dad operators, and they're now they're now getting all the profits. They're getting all the sales from all those customers in that local area. They're making all the profit." You can't think that that's greedy and inhumane, and then also say owning Woolworths shares is risky. Mm. It, it just doesn't. Those two things don't compute. You're complaining about them making too much money, and at the same time scared that they're not making enough money. They're not going to continue to make enough money. It, it, it doesn't. It doesn't compute. No, it doesn't. Um, yeah, so that, that I, mean, I mean, essentially, companies can be more and more profitable every year because of of yeah. that reinvestment philosophy. So, I, th- I think so, there's, there's another thing here that you, you sort of, um, I guess, I'm trying to think of what other what other and the, again, there's are all valid concerns or thoughts or um, yeah, concerns that people have about big companies having too much power and, and too much of the of the power in negotiations is there, there's an ongoing um, sort of ongoing debate that has been around since the invention of the joint stock company though that's <laughs> is you know of the value that's of the value that's created by uh, this organization how much should go towards labor how much should go towards capital and how much should go towards customers Mm-hmm. And, and someone else who's more of an economist would probably go, that's it, that's not it, you got it wrong, they call different things. But basically they're saying if a company makes a lot more money, how much of it should flow through in higher wages to the employees, how much of it should go through as dividends to the, to the shareholders and how much should go through as reduced cost to the, to the customers. Mm-hmm. And so I think the other thing that people um, think or fear or um, the reason why they don't feel that that's sustainable is because it's assumed that that's a zero sum game as well. Mm. It's it's that if 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 this company is making more profit, they have to be either driving down the wages of their staff, or they have to be ripping off their customers in order to in order to make that to to you know have that profit flowing through to the shareholders. Mm. And it's you know, the Woolworths thing is a great example again there, where if you've got five supermarkets, you've got a few staff, you've got you know. Not many shareholders, and and you've got some customers who are probably paying a relatively high price for for their goods mm. because you don't have the buying power. Now, if you've got three thousand supermarkets, you you have to have you have to have the staff to to not just to run that, but to manage that and to and to and to do it. So you know, we won't get into the whole thing of whether that's creating jobs or not. But but mm. you have to have a he- heap more staff. You you have to be providing a progression and a pathway for them to to become um, you know higher earning over time. Otherwise, they're going to leave and go somewhere else. So you have to, to some degree, you have to be doing at least the bare minimum to keep your labour on side. And and you have to be keeping the price down for your customers. Otherwise, someone else is going to come in and cut their lunch. So. Woolworths becoming more profitable over time. It's not as though they've maintained the same five supermarkets and they've just squeezed the life out of their their you know thirty employees. And it's not as though they've just drained that local community where they mm. uh, by driving up the price of the of their groceries. 
and then and then flowed all these huge amounts of profits through to the shareholders. It, it doesn't work like that. It can't work like that. It has mm. to be over the long term. It has to be. It has to. The only way this continues to work, or the only way that this um, would work, is to be a sustainable thing where the employees are, are, are um, you know, receiving higher wages over time to to allow for at least inflation and and some potential wage growth. The customers have to be getting a better deal, otherwise they're going to go down the street to someone else who can do a, a better job for cheaper. Mm. And your shareholders, <laughs> as, a, as a byproduct of serving those groups, or, or of those two groups making, uh, being happy, contributing members of of the of the organisation by by contributing their labour and and their money as as customers, that's where the profit comes from. So I think there's mm. there's also a component of we won't even get into this of the whole thing of a lot of companies that are seen as risky is that it doesn't it would be risky for a company to just turn around and go we're going to double our prices tomorrow and we're going to halve our wages tomorrow because mm. you'd go well you're going to lose all your staff and you're going to lose all your customers and and yes you're going to by being purely greedy in the short term you are you are going to blow your whole company up that's not how that's not how companies operate they they're not they're not doing it to be good to be you know Good corporate citizens, as much as they'll advertise that, but the reason why they pay rising wages over time, the reason why they bring you know bring pricing down you know over time, is because they want to keep all those customers and keep all those employees and make long term growing profits over time. Mm. So I don't know whether that helps at all. It's yeah, look, 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 it look, it doesn't, and I sort of it really just highlights there that that you can diverse you can diversify away from any of these risks as well. Yep. Because we're we're talking about the yeah. concept of profitability and then riskiness. Yes. Okay, so so um, if I own a broad range of the best quality companies yeah. in Australia and around the world, I diversify away from those risks. Mm. Yeah, I have. I mean, the, like over time, there's companies that will go to zero. They will go broke yeah. in that in that bundle um, because they just haven't moved with the times. Yeah, like like you know, yeah. Um, if we're looking at a micro industry like like um, the supermarket industry, yeah. yeah, you would have some that that just can't compete for whatever reason. They've yeah, yeah. unscrupulously yeah. You know, doubled their prices <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. and 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 halve their wages. Yeah, um, they they can only do that for a certain amount of time before yeah. Yeah. a competitor comes in and and yeah, and and takes them out. Yeah, um, that's the benefit of it. Yeah, and and, and it, look, it's it's just so easy and so cheap mm-hmm. to to be able to done correctly. Yes, to to be to, that, to be able to diversify away point. from that risk. So it's, it's probably. We've talked for ten minutes, and we've probably just actually canned our own title, which is that companies can be greedy and risky. Because if if they do become overly greedy, then then they run a risk. But what we would consider risk in 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 the investment strategies that we would normally recommend is that's why you diversify it, because we mm. don't know. And again, using that example of the the Coles versus Woolworths battle that's been going on for mm. for, for decades now in Australia, you don't you, you don't know who's going to win that. And, mm. and maybe there will be a winner, maybe there won't. Maybe there'll be some third entrant that comes in and and, and wipes them both out. But if you were if you were if you were hoping that you were going to pick the right one and go, I'm only going to invest in Coles, and 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 Woolworths comes in and and takes all your customers out, then mm. then yes, that is risky. Or or if you think that, um, you know, the big banks are the, the example that I talk about there, where there there are there are profits being made by all these banks. In ten years' time, we don't know which banks will be making what profits from which mm. customers. There's always new entrants into that space. There's people gaining and losing market share all the time. If you if you think that the if you think that an individual company is risky, you, you are correct. There is no doubt that any mm. individual company is risky because they either can um, they can go backwards or they can go bankrupt. But if you go, those services or those goods are going to need to be provided to people over time. People need banking. People mm. need food, so they, I know that I know that some company is going to provide that to people. Now, whether you and and I know that companies out there, there, there are new entrants and the existing players. All they're thinking about is how to capture as much market share and make as much profit as possible. So, mm. so they, I guess they are greedy in that way. But simultaneously, by doing that, they are they are providing these goods and services, and and they are. Yeah, they're, they're battling within themselves to provide the best goods and services possible, and to pass those profits on. So it can't it can't yeah, be look, both greedy and risky. Yeah, look, they they um, greedy is a funny word, isn't it? Because because 
you know, capitalism is is very much like democracy. It's the it's the yeah. worst <laughs> form of structure yeah. Yeah. Exactly. ever known, excepting for all others. Yeah. Um, and you only have to look at at communist countries yeah. and look at the standard of life yeah. that the the yeah you know, the citizens of communist countries have, mm. where the cost of state run mm. companies yeah. to produce a widget. Yeah, is yeah you know, ten times what it costs. Yeah, a um a, a private enterprise to produce in Australia or America or somewhere like that. So yeah. so you know that competition. Yeah, and that innovation and that and yeah. that greed. Yeah. If you if you if you say greed, yeah. if you think of it as a a not a dirty word in this case, a, a good work, the yeah. greed to get to be better than one's competitor, yeah. uh, to be cheaper, to be more profitable, to be yeah. you know, to, to serve the customer better. Yeah. That flows through. Yeah. That flows through. And you just I mean yeah. just, all you have to do is look at um, communist countries and companies, state run mm. versus private enterprises in um, in, in democratic comp and, and democratic countries. Yeah. To look at the standard of life yeah. for 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 and yeah. the, and the and the buying power that those consumers have, so yeah. so um, I'm really I'm really opening up another can of words here by saying that. <laughs> I thought but, you were but just about to, we're just about to wrap up. I thought you were about to say greed is good, like I'll made out of that. <laughs> Wall, was going, Wall, mate. Wall Street, <laughs> Gordon Gecko from from no, Wall Street. No, but I think um, you you're dead right. Where it's like that, the word greed, um, and and I'm also reminded of this thing where. People think of companies as a as a thing, or as an. Or it, it's just a collection of individuals. So, mm. what's the? You know the. the I, I won't go into it, but there's a, there's a, a great movie where old mate smashes the phone, and uh, in Bruges, I think it is. He's supposed to talk on the phone. He gets really upset, and he smashes the phone. And his wife comes in and goes, "Harry, it's an inanimate object." <laughs> and the point is, same with getting angry at the phone. It's it's the person on the other end of that that, that is the issue. So, yeah. if you're upset at, when people say these greedy companies or these these you know greedy banks or these greedy whatever you may have a very valid concern there which might be that you know the people the people in charge of that organization are doing the wrong thing by their customers or by their employees like we're not mm. we're not here saying that people don't do the wrong thing it's not that at all we're just saying that that drive for for profit and for market share is is actually fundamentally that's what that's what takes away the risk. We we mm. we can rely on what companies as an as a whole as a whole organization. We know what a company is going to try and do, and so because of that, we can safely be invested in them, and we can be diversified across many of them, and know that they are going to try and make as much profit as possible and flow that through to shareholders. Mm. We we can rely on that. Now, if you wanted me to invest in a company, and and the company said, we may or may not be a not for profit. I'd be very scared because I've be got no idea what these guys are focused on. I don't know what they're trying to achieve. I don't know whether they're going to, you know, mm. really be focused on on trying to flow profits through to shareholders or not. So mm. it's it's a separate issue to go. People might, you know, corporate governance could be loosened or tightened, or you know, there's all sorts of issues of people doing the wrong thing in these positions of power. But across the board. You, your companies cannot be greedy in that way. They can't be focused on profits and on trying to, you know, uh, make long-term profits from from their customers and keep their employees long-term in order to make those long-term profits. They can't be. They can't be both focused on that and also, and and, and more and risky and, and risk mm. and, and and you can't be worried about them being making too much profit over time and of their and of share prices going to zero. It just mm. doesn't. It doesn't correlate in that way. Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to the Money Over 50 podcast with Money Over 50 Financial Advisors. We look forward to catching up again soon.